This is how you move a bison herd. Dunbar! First things first is I gotta get Eleanor out into the main pasture. The main herd is down there. Oh, there's a helicopter. So it's been a few days and animals are doing great, but after the work, after the working, the animals are have calmed down a little bit. Rooster's back. But we've got the uh, we've got we still have the calves out here with Eleanor. But one thing I wanna do is I think now it's time to let Eleanor back out with the herd and so she's been pacing this fence she's been wanting out for a while now and uh, I think I think it's time we need to get her with the main herd so what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna open some gates and see if I can get her to get down there with the main herd and, and then I'm gonna move the, actually the main herd to a lot they haven't been in in a long time and so I'm really excited about that I'll tell you more about it Got some uh, normal cubes. Uh, hopefully, that'll get her in. Try to get her a little bit closer. We'll see. Well, the I tried to go out in the pasture and round her up, but that didn't work. So the rest of the herd is up here now. And so when the rest of the herd showed up, Eleanor came up. Good morning, Dunbar. Hey, big boy. I still don't know if I can get her. I still have to cut her away from the calves, and that's going to be a little difficult. But yeah, she's still a little skittish from from being worked. It takes some while. All right. So the main herd was down in the pasture. They saw me trying to get Eleanor up and separate her, and I don't know if you know, recognize this pen, but this is the holding area where we actually caught the bison. I caught them the night before we worked them. So I caught them Friday night and then um, they were in here. We fed them a bale of hay just to calm them down some. And uh, they're actually in here now. I'm surprised. There's a bale of hay in here and I think that's they come up and get some dry roughage. Kind of surprised they're back in here after being caught in here. So they, they know now what it is. Uh, what it's used for but we'll use it for other reasons now and we did the same thing we set an eight foot post in the ground hung a top rail and then put our continuous fence panels um, just like we did with big joe hey big guy i bet you want something i bet he smells some of these you're not too mad at us are you yeah we're about to use these right here to get you to move. I'm gonna give you a couple of them just so you know I have some. And then I'm gonna move you. We're gonna move to greener pastures. You good with that, Dunbar? All right. So I'm gonna move them to the new pasture that they're in. Um, one of the new paddocks, uh, super green. We haven't had animals on it since maybe last November or December. So you're looking at four plus months since these animals have been off of it. They're Kevin threw some wheat, uh, some rye and oats out in this field and uh, tried to get it to grow. It wouldn't grow hardly in the winter, lack of rain. And then boom, it's taken off here in the past couple of months. So it's time to get the bison out on it. What do you want? Huh? This is how you move a bison herd. Dunbar! 
on, buddy. Come on. So here comes the main herd. Dunbar, he's just off doing his own thing. Maya, you ready? We gotta go open the gate really quick. So I don't get crowded. one of those days where uh, it's very gratifying today um, a lot of hard work a lot of time effort money that goes into this I built this um, I built this last spring this is a decent size uh, paddock here this is one of our biggest paddocks and then the next big project was cross fencing we cross fence so we could get more paddocks and uh, in the meantime we got Big Joe kind of in between there and that changed stuff up and then as you saw in a five-part series getting my water system established getting that automatic water system established and so once we were able to get the automatic water system established this is the result we're able to rotate our animals and now that I've got the big herd down here in this pretty good sized lot they've got a water system now and so we don't have to worry about that we're not feeding them we don't have to feed them really winter's over look at what we got it is this is what these guys do very well this is what they're known for is the grazing of course these guys have plenty of grass but what I want you to see is Kevin has thrown Kevin threw out um, he knows a lot more about plants than I do a lot more uh, something I need to study more on and learn more about but Kevin threw out some wheat some rye and some oats back in the winter time early winter 
at some point and he uh he threw those out and we didn't have a very wet winter uh but the spring has came on and slowly this stuff has came up and i want you to just look at it it's super green there's some spring grasses left the summer grasses hadn't hit yet but this looks like it could be some rye or some wheat these bison are gonna love it we haven't had animals on this since november maybe last year and we wanted to they hit this one hard because it was their first time last summer to really graze this so we really wanted it to recover in the meantime kind of threw out some of those uh type of grasses to see if they'd take off and uh, we don't do that a lot we don't cultivate here um that's just uh we just threw those kevin threw those seeds out and some of them took and some of them didn't but and we're happy with that but this is what i love to see is those bison out there grazing and so we'll have them in here for a while they've got plenty to eat and what that means is i'm able to because i've let the big herd out now i'm able to move a big joe and the two ladies around as well so that's exciting stuff thank you guys for watching i hope you have enjoyed this long process of just establishing a water system, establishing paddocks so we could get that regenerative ag going and rotate our animals and also working the bison and are doing part of our spring vaccinations. Uh, man, that is so exciting. I tell you, that is gratifying as well. And I will say that not only is it a huge accomplishment to be able to raise these awesome animals, it is just that what we did with big joe and doc pushing us and saying you've got to be the dominant one you've got to let him know that you're the dominant one you know him pushing us him him he was like coaching me it, i was i felt like the student again well i'm always a student with him he's so knowledgeable but you know we were all there uh had some close friends there boone was there our mom's family homestead kevin my wife doc was there and his grandson brandon and it was just it was so fun i was had the trailer loaded up we're gonna put big joe in it we're gonna take him to doc's place in stratford it's gonna be an even longer day and in the midst of that i pulled the trailer up and we got him in we 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 finally got him that was just amazing and that's probably i'll have to say one of probably one of my top accomplishments as far as raising bison in uh in three years and we're coming up on exactly actually we've been doing this for three years we're past three years yeah so uh i will have to say uh not only having the bison and, and being able to work them here in our own facility this is and besides having your first calf here on your own property that's a big accomplishment to see those red dogs out there which hopefully we'll be having some very soon very soon i would say getting big joe on the scale weighing 1885 getting him the proper vaccinations that he needed is probably one of the biggest accomplishments we've had but the other th cool part about that situation is we had everybody with us and we had people there that were a part of that big accomplishment and so that made it all better i'll stop talking it was a good time thank you guys for watching